Hi everyone, this is Elisa from An Eyes to Buck Crochet and I'm here to tell you what I've been up to. Uh, thank you for so much for coming. I do enjoy showing off my makes and I'm so glad you come week after week to see it. You can find me in social media as Anaya's Toy Box. I am on Instagram, Facebook, Ravelry, and Etsy. So, uh, what I've been up to? It's been two weeks. Uh, last week I couldn't come on because I was feeling sick. And today I'm back. Um, you guys may know or may not know, but I have been all of 2024, been in a low crojo funk. I don't know what to call it. I just, it feels like I'm on the same project still. So yesterday I buckled down and I said, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to finish what I have and move on to something new. So I started with this guy. Now it's been a while because it's been two weeks. It's going to be really low. This is where I was last time I showed it to you, but it has been two weeks and I showed it to you for two weeks before that. So this took about a month, <sighs> it shouldn't have taken a month, but anyways, it's this beautiful shawl, which the name escapes me for some reason right now. Um, I know it starts with an A, it's probably going to be down below here. Um, it is by Kame. K dot A dot M E dot E dot crochet. Uh, she designed it. It is a paid for pattern and I love it. I love her work and I thought I would have enough because I had five skeins of this trubu. I mixed all the colors. This was what was left over from making this sweater and I bought the purple one first. I bought two of them and I bought the brown at one point for I don't know what I just bought one of it and uh, this is what I have it is I'm 5'4 it is my wingspan and that's about it if I were to block it which I don't block my work mainly because I don't have space to store blocking boards I'd rather use that space to store yarn so I don't have any blocking boards to actually block this but if I block it there is a nice stretch to it so I might be able to get a bit more but I'm not going to block it. So this is it. I think the colors do look nice together. Um, it's all my trubu. I managed to make six of these shells in each with each color. So each color you see is one skein. I finished a skein, then moved to the next. I only had one of these, so that's the middle. And then back to this uh, purple and I end up the gray and I do like the way it looks together. I am a little tired of it because I spent a month working on it and it shouldn't have taken a month. It's just low crojo, but it's done so I could start a new shawl now and it'll be something different and hopefully that will kickstart my juices. I don't know. So that is FO number one. FO number two, you've seen before too. Uh, I don't remember how far I was when I showed it to you last, but this is Carrie Lords from Edwards Menagerie. I borrowed the book from Kindle Unlimited. Uh, I am a, I do have a, subscri a subscription to Kindle Unlimited, so I was able to get this. Um, I returned the book since then. I had a little bit of problems with um, not knowing which one was the front or the back. I don't think it was intuitively. And for the head, I didn't know which one was the top and the bottom. I don't think that was intuitive either. But anyways, I finished it. Um, I always, always look at these variegated yarns and I'm like, oh, it's gonna make such a cute amigurumi. And then it makes the amigurumi and I'm like, eh, not sure. Now this head pulled so beautifully. I think if this, happened on the body, I would love this so much more. But it didn't. It happened on the head and the head is cute, but anyways, um, variegated yarn and amigurumi. What do you think? Me? I keep telling myself it's going to look good. Just try it. It'll look good, Elisa. And I'm always a little disappointed. But here it is, my little bunny from the Edward Menagerie's 
book by Carrie Lord. So then uh, I decided I was going through my DK uh, cotton yarn, which is what I like to make dolls out of, and I took out the smallest balls I can find the smallest bits of yarn, like stuff that I've used before, but I only have a little bit. And I decided I'm gonna make these dolls out of it. So I was gonna make, I have four skin colors where I only have a little bit left. So I was gonna make four of these dolls. Um, the green I have a lot left, but I needed something that matched nicely with the, with the blue. So I, I still have, I think I can make another pair of pants with this jeans color. Mm, I don't know. I can make more shoes, but I don't know about anything else. Uh, the green, there was a a good amount left. And this was not one of those little balls that I pulled out. It was just I needed something that I thought would look good. And um, the top is uh, the, uh, acrylic. Uh, the hair, hair I usually make with acrylic. I don't know. I just like the fuzziness of it. It looks more like hair than cotton. I don't like the fuzzies on the the face because you know it's supposed to be skin so I prefer skin to be cotton so that's just how I make it so I made this this is from my flutterfly pattern it is available in my Ravelry it's a superhero pattern with wings on the back I did not make the wings I did not make the superhero mask which is three rows over here where you just color change to make the mask um, and I didn't make the skirt because this is a little boy but, you know, this is it. So I made Flutterfly, or this pattern, a few times, and I was kind of growing bored of it. And I'm like, do I really, really want to make three more of this? And I might make another one. I'm not saying I won't. But uh, I thought I'd make something different. So I picked up my thing. I did not write down what I did. Oops, I forgot to move this. Sorry. Anyways, I picked up my hook and again, my little bits of yarn. This is all little bits of yarn. There's nothing that I took, pulled out big and I started making her. Um, I knew I wanted to try out this hair. Uh, the kids in my school come with these beautiful braided hair and I wanted to try it out. I'm not completely satisfied with how the braid started. Um, see like right here. I worked like this, then I went there, and I did stuff like the way that the the lines showed me, but I have a, a little bigger gap here, and I kind of wish I did it differently so that I wouldn't have that gap. I have the gaps in the front too, uh, here and here, but uh, I think she, she turned out cute. I just uh, picked up... I, like, I did write down what I did for the legs and I wrote down what I did for the arms because, you know, you have to make two hand, arms and you have to make two legs. I am not completely satisfied with the legs, so I think I might make this doll again by changing out the legs. I have no intention to share this pattern. It's just made up. I did not write down, except for the arms and the legs, what I did. Uh, I just went with the flow. And it was so freeing not to, like, be like... Normally, when I make a new pattern, like when I'm making up something like this, I have my iPad out in front of me. I do uh, take out, I go onto Word and I format Word. And as I am working, I write down on Word what I am doing. Um, that, and put it into the format. Like if you see my newer format has tables, I have the tables already set up and I'm writing as I go and I need to delete, I'll delete that, um, delete what I write, whatever, but I have it all done as I'm working and it's such, it helps me in the sense that I don't have to redo it. Like if I wrote it all on paper, I have to retype it, I'd have to reformat it, I'd have to re all of that. I don't have to do that, it's all done. By the time this doll is done, I have the pattern written but I still have like some formatting stuff to do, not too much, but most of the time I've done most of it at the beginning. I just have a little bit here and there of uh, fixing up. And it makes it easier for me to have the pattern done for sharing. But oh my gosh, it's so freeing to just do whatever you want and not have to stop 
to take out the iPad, to write down what you're doing and just continue like that. And I loved, loved the process of making her. And I think this one actually pulled me out of my little, is it too early to say? I don't think it is because you'll see what I have out after this. Um, I think it did pull me out of my funk. Like it, it really creatively it got my juices running and I was able to finish this one after which I was working on before and after I was working on this but I finished it um it just pulled me out the creative process of making her but there she is uh those are all my fo's my la my last thing I want to show you is my whip which is my top and yes I know I've shown it to you so many times oh I forgot about that let me show you this. This is in between an FO and a whip because I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. I saw this square. It's by Hooked by Robin and I wanted to make something out of it. And so I started making this. I made this today and I realized it's a little small for what I, for what I had in mind. So I don't know what I'm going to do with this square. I might make four more crochet around them and have them become. Oh, I didn't show that one have them become a bag uh, because I've been making these or I don't know what else I don't know what I'm going to do with this but I made this square in between an FO and a whip because the square is done but I don't know what I'm going to do with it um, I forgot to show you this this is um, I can't remember the stitch's name It'll be linked down below. Uh, Bag o Day recently put out a new uh, stitch. And I'm like, ooh, I need to try it. So I took out this uh, Mandala Ombre. Um, I think it would have turned out better if I had used a solid yarn. But it's so pretty, this stitch. This stitch is very, very pretty. Um, anyways, I pulled out my Mandala Ombre and I started working on this. I still haven't come up. Okay, it's not that I haven't come up with a solution. I could use white yarn to sew it on, as uh, white thread to sew, sew it on, but I still haven't given up on finding. Like I had those mini spools of so many different colors of yarn. Uh, I keep saying yarn of thread, of thread, and I can't for the life of me find it, and I can't completely give up on it either. And so I have not sewn any of these bags onto the little bag yet. I probably won't show them to you again because I'm sick of showing you all these old stuff. But I will eventually sew them onto the thing, probably with white, catching the back of the yarn instead of the front. I'm stretching it a little bit because this is a tight stitch and this bag is doing that. I wonder if I should, I don't know what I should do. Wet it and pull it out? I don't know. But whatever, um, I'm going to sew this on at one point and probably with white thread. I probably won't find that until two years from now. They're like, oh, I needed it for that project. Don't you hate when that happens? But anyways, this is a FO-ish project, meaning I do have to weave in the ends. But beyond that, all I have to do is sew on the, the bag to the bag to the inner bag but anyways when it's sewn up because I did have light pink I did sew up this one this is what it's gonna look like when it's sewn up it's not sewn up yet uh, but this is one of the bags that I made and I have I told you I wasn't gonna show it to you I have these ones that have not been sewn up four of them now uh, anyways I'll probably be making more uh, I just need to figure out. Maybe I'll turn these, like I said, already. Make two of them. Do some extra crocheting. I don't know. I really don't know what I'm going to do. Anyways, my last one is my only whip. I'm not counting this because I don't know what to do with it yet. And if what to make, if I need to make more or any of that. Uh, so this is my last whip. Now this one I always knew was going to be a long-term project. This looks so huge, but it does fit me. This is, uh, I wear X, XL, so it's around that size. So it's somewhere in between X and XL. I'm making it for my body, so I did crochet, like I did chain up, 
put it around my neck and then I'm trying it on very frequently as I'm making it and this is how it is right now I don't know if you guys saw you might have but I had made a mistake with this and I ended up frogging I had up to here done probably up to here done and I had to frog it all the way up to the top was it three or four balls of yarn it was like three whole balls of yarn and some over four but it's all done I've reached back plus some to where I was before I frogged this is what it's looking like there is no pattern to this because I'm just making it up as I go um I do know I'm not what stitch am I using I don't know this if I had been working back and forth would have been a herringbone stitch but it's not a herringbone stitch because I'm not working like that but I'm doing it like it's a herringbone anyways what I have learned from making this is forget about wearing one layer forget about that just make it with a bigger hook so it has more drape and takes up less yarn and less time and just buy myself a long sleeve t-shirt to wear under it that's what I'm gonna do next time this is taking a really really long time but I don't mind it taking a long time as much as I mind how stiff it is I'm hoping once I wash it it won't be as stiff um, I'm using a G hook for this and if I had used a bigger hook this yarn would have gone down further than it is now and it looks pretty hideous the way it is right now but I'm hoping once I have the rest of the yarn it'll look good and it does look good on me when I try it on I'm not gonna try it on because it requires me changing and I don't want to change like I mean I'd have to wear something with sleeves under it and I just don't want to do that so when you're when I'm finished I'll take a picture and show it to you but this is where I am right now um, I am enjoying it uh, but it's and this one I always knew was going to be a long-term project. I knew it's going to take a couple months to do this because I'm using this tiny little hook, which I finally, I've been looking for, but I haven't been finding it but until now. This tiny little hook, it's a G hook. Is it clear? I hope it's clear. Um, it means it has less drape, this top, than I would have liked. And it means it's taking longer. Uh, but more than that is because I have been on a crochet rut that I've been working like I worked so long like that bear took so long because I'm on a crochet rut this bunny took so long because I'm on a crochet rut and knowing even though I know this is a long-term project <sighs> this is taking a long time too and it's not taking longer than it should be it's just because everything is taking so long, I just am tired of looking at the projects I am working on. And so now that I have finished my shawl and the bunny and I finished the bear, it's been sent out. Um, this I'm not going to finish very soon, but at least I'll have some new projects to work on. And hopefully that will get me out of this. <clears throat> Twenty twenty four will be a good year for crochet. It's just starting off slow. That's all. It's gonna be a good year for crochet, I promise. Just starting off slow. Anyways, that's what I got. Um this is what I've been up to these past two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> I know it I mean I'm showing you four FOs, five if you count that uh bag thing and one half FO and a whip and you think well that's a lot for two weeks and it is it just feels like I'm working on the same things all the time I'm not it just feels like it uh, but anyways uh, I bought two patterns hoping hoping that it's gonna help me be excited about another pro new project I don't know I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, anyways, hopefully I'll show it to you next week. Those two new projects, or at least one of them. Um, 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to hear more from me, 